Hey there, it's Austin Meyer, the author of Explain, and we are sitting here on the runway at Burlington, Vermont, in an absolutely wonderful little plane, the quick, safe, efficient little Cirrus SR22. Um, one minor problem, though, this weather is so boring. Gosh, this weather is so boring. It just looks like Arizona in the summertime or something like that. Really boring, just blue sky, nothing going on. Why don't we come up with something cool? Let's engage real weather. So the real weather in x -Plane is gonna download all this weather from the National Oceanic Administration servers and build up a complete three-dimensional picture of the weather all over the world and apply it right here in Burlington, Vermont, for example, where we're flying. Um, I'm looking out the window right now and I'm seeing quite a few cloud layers up to very high altitude. It's a beautiful, a beautiful blue sky day, but with lots of cloud layers uh, on the way up. And I'd say it's maybe, mm, 30 to 40% blue sky and uh, about two thirds clouds. So let's see if we get the same thing when I turn on uh, real weather for an airplane sitting in an airport, it's just about five minutes away from here. So flight menu, flight configuration, go to the weather tab. You see the weather tab here and go to customize. And in customize, we're not gonna manually enter weather, we're gonna download real weather. The download comes rocking on along, and here we go. Now look at this. We have a much more complex weather situation here, don't we? We got something like 10 different wind layers, all with different speeds, from 308 degrees magnetic at five knots down here at the surface, to 265 degrees at 40 knots up high above 50,000 feet. We have three cloud layers, a scattered, broken, uh, and broken cumulus at various different altitudes. And so we got all these winds and clouds all downloaded from um, National Oceanic Administration servers. Well, they're actually downloaded from our servers because we mirror the NOAA because the NOAA servers kept going down. But ultimately the weather came from the NOAA, National Oceanic Administration. And let's see what do we got. Yeah, look at this. This, and I'm looking out the window to compare what I see out the window. I got windows on both sides of me here. And I'm comparing that to what I'm seeing in the sim and yeah, that's it. So this is how you get real weather in X-Plane. It's absolutely simple, a total piece of cake. Um, I could stop the video there, but why not go into just a little more detail for you? If you bother to click on the video, I can show you something a little more unique than what I just did. Let's go into the technical specifics of exactly what kind of weather we're getting here. Go to the developer menu if you want to see this as well, and go to show weather map. And in the show weather map, what we see is clearly a map of the world. And what's kind of interesting here is I zoom in on this, we're actually looking at two completely different different types of data here. One of the pieces of data we're looking at is in this case, a two dimensional map of grid surface meter, which is actually ground elevation. You might think ground elevation, what does that got to do with real weather? Well, it's extremely important because if you look at a temperature or a wind, at the surface, you wanna know how high that is above sea level to compare that temperature to uh, a standard atmosphere model. So you really do need to know the elevation. So we have a two dimensional map, map here of the elevation of the world. And we have all these METARs. Each of these little X's is a little METAR weather report that was ex observed at an airport. So you're seeing two totally different types of data, an elevation database and a bunch of METARs. And you can see this big red area in the middle of the country, uh, doubtless moving up this way uh, is a whole bunch of weather. So that's grip surface. Let's go to scan. Oh, how about wind speed, meters per second? Now you can start to see the wind speed as these beautiful patterns that are globally, globally uh, presented. And so what x is gonna do is it's gonna kind of mix or blend these wind patterns that you see in blue at the global scale with the winds that are reported for each METAR at the actual airport. And this is cool because there's, of course, different wind levels. I can drag this little slider here. And as you see, as I drag the slider, we're going to higher and higher altitudes. And so we're getting the wind up to higher and higher altitudes as well. So it looks like, oh, altitude uh, level nine or so is giving the highest winds. And so remember, just now with the weather screen, you saw winds at various different altitudes and it's like five knots down low and 50 knots up high. You're seeing the global maps of wind at various different altitudes that we 
used to generate those winds. And then you can also know that these winds are interpolated to the METARs as we get down to low altitude closer to the airport for the traffic pattern area. And then we can also do things like our temperature at various different altitudes. Oh, apparently it's hot out in the Midwest, although I think we already knew that. Uh, and then the dew points at various different altitudes. What well, might be another fun one? Oh, the precipitation ratio. Oh, isn't this interesting? So with the precipitation, as you can see, is strong right here uh, in the Chicago area or just south of Chicago. And that correlates perfectly with all the little red X's that we see for the METARs. So isn't this interesting? Looking at two completely different types of data. One is a global uh, two-dimensional grid for precipitation. And the other is the actual reported METARs at each airport. And you see how they're all kind of saying the same thing. But x still blends between the data to always give smooth transitions in case they ever do disagree. Surface visibility, ooh, that's another interesting one. You can see where the areas of low visibility are. Ooh, how about cloud coverages? Oh, look at those cloud coverages, that's incredible. And so these help generate the cloud coverages in X-Plane. And we can go to different uh, altitudes and get the cloud cover for low, medium, and high uh, altitude layers as well, which is kind of cool. One I know you can drag over there. And, um, and then we can go to uh, the altitudes that the clouds are at and uh, Clear air turbulence, I'm not seeing too much clear air turbulence, you know, or cumulonimbus right now. What about our envelope wind speed? So this is what X-Plane does, is it actually starts to generate the speed based on data that it's getting both from the METARs and the global wind database. And if you look really carefully, you can see the weather kind of seem to be generated on the fly here. And that's because X-Plane is actually building a little map to interpolate between what it sees in the METARs and what it got in that big global two-dimensional grid. So anyway, there's an awful lot of math going on here to try and interpolate between all the different reports and build a real 3D model based on all the different types of data that are coming in. But at the end of the day, of course, all we really care about is when we fly our wonderful little planes like this in the sim, that the weather we get in the sim is the same as the weather we get in reality. And uh, I feel like with this latest cloud rendering tech and real weather tech that we've got in X-Plane, we're doing a pretty passable job of taking what's really going on in the real world. Looking out the window again, comparing it to the sim, they look exactly the same. We're doing a pretty decent job of taking what's in the real world and getting it into the sim.